music. Hey. It's that time again. It's the Berkey and the Badger for Dave Battle Show. It's going to get wild. It's going to get wacky. It might even get a little sadie. We're going to talk about board games and the board game industry. And, you know, we might talk about anything else we want to talk about. Hey, 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 we're live at the Berkey and Badger Board Game Battle Show. We're live in St. Louis, Missouri at the Miniature Market Superstore. This place is crazy, and I am here with the nature boy, the <laughs> God's gift to the planet Earth, the national treasure, Sir Robert Oren. You did forget global icon. Oh, global icon, dang <laughs> I, I meant to say that one. <laughs> Man, boy, you really sold this place. It, you made it sound so exciting. There's nobody in here. Oh, they're here. They're, if you build it, they will come. Yes, but we have to open. Oh, and <laughs> hey, oh well, yeah, the doors are about to open, but I got to tell you something else. We also have another special guest, and he's popping in incognito, impromptu, in uh, other in words. Here he is. Sir Alex Hello. Goldsmith from the Dukes of Dice. Yay! Hi. The Duke. The, the Duke. No, not the Duke. He is the Duke. No, 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 no. Sean will not be not take kindly to that. He, <laughs> he's like the bat. He's the Robin to Batman here. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Ooh. Wow. He kind of looks more like Bane to me. I don't know. Oh, yeah, he does look Batman. like Bane. <laughs> You're Batman. I'm Batman. <laughs> You're like uh, Commissioner Batman. Gordon. Oh, no. Now. Commissioner Gordon. <laughs> okay, you can see the show has already gone off the rails, right? Yeah, it was a train wreck <laughs> before we even started. And then so what are you up to? Who? Yeah. 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 Can, can you introduce your, your co-host for Crown well, yeah. Out Wow, what a hug. Yeah. We are live with Sir Badger, very doublet of France himself. Say hi, Barry. Oh, I've been promoted from court jester in Babylon. And been left in Babylon all alone while you're nally gaggling over there in, in some miniature market somewhere looking at miniatures. Oh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. How are you all doing? As you can see, this show is going to be live and direct from miniature market. Q thingy. Which button is it? That one. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! There you go. Oh, okay. there you go. Uh, There's the website. Miniaturemarket.com. Look at this. Back in stock, Azul. Uh, uh, Steve just told me they sold over 600 copies of Azul overnight. in one day, yeah. overnight. That thing's popular. It's crazy nuts, right? We just played that at Con of the North in Minneapolis, and my daughters, Maddie and Gabby, played it. And they said, can we play that game again? Can we play that game again? <laughs> that was big fun. So anyway, many thanks to Steve Lozinski from Miniature Market uh, is hosting us at the show today. We just actually drove all the way from Minnesota and brought down 12 of our game toppers for this grand opening store launch. Six of the great big Mycroft Warhammer tables are here. In addition to that, we have six of the Holmes tables. So if you come to Miniature Market in St. Louis, Missouri, you are going to be playing in style, I got to tell you. Wow. It's all about style and flash <laughs> and glitz and glamour. Bling, baby. That's all you. Bling. Well, there. Uh, <laughs> thank you. Thank Jeez. you very much. So, so you, you've done yourself <laughs> promoting. So it's my it's turn my now. Turn. Oh. Yes, please. Yes, okay. please. Up on Kickstarter at the moment is a game that I'm really interested in. And it's called Immortal 8, which is a card drafting game where players are gods, but nobody knows which god you are. <laughs> and each god will score differently at the end of the game. If you've played Seven Wonders, you'll kind of get the gist of the game. But this game, as I said, has this hidden role aspect where players don't know uh, which god the other players are. And they all have their own kind of like asymmetric scoring. I think I've just created a new term, asymmetric scoring. So you will all score the same way, but there'll be an extra bonus because each god will score differently. And you're going to be constructing civilizations with your cards very, very quickly. 
Um, the games play very, very smoothly. There's not a lot of cards involved in the game. You're only going to have a total of nine cards come through your hand throughout the two rounds. And you're only going to be able to construct five of them at max. And you're going to be using your buildings. You're going to be using the buildings of other players. And you're also going to be using these wonders, which are universal to everyone. The game is quick playing. It's very thinky. It's a very deep gamery game um but with some very simple mechanics very much like seven wonders but in my books a lot better that's uh, mortal eight and it's up on kickstarter right now so if you want to go and check it out and uh check it out and you might now, even when find you a game to you, when you go to kickstarter do you look it up under gamery game <laughs> gamery it's, game yeah it's not under family game or it's not under miniature game um, but it is on the gamery game. Gamery game. Gamery game. See, we've called this episode Miniatures Explosion, and now we've turned it into Gamery Explosion. Well, basically, well, because, the real yeah. gist of it, you next to me, you're basically a miniature. <laughs> I, am, I am a little miniature. I'm just, I'm just calling it the well, way Well, if he's is. a miniature, what am I? Huh? <laughs> well, you yeah. see this first perspective. You Robin already. Apparently, yeah. <laughs> In a world that's dominated by minis and Kickstarter games which involve bad man, um, it's nice to have a Kickstarter which is just cards, wouldn't you say? Did you see that he had an actual Batman miniature? Yes, he did. Wow. He just worked From that out, campaign? Like, like there was no tomorrow. And there's Nightwing. Oh. Huh? Mm. You know something? Everybody thinks that all I care about is playing games with miniatures. Yeah, yeah. When that is the farthest thing from the truth. It is? Okay. And I'll tell you why. Yeah, tell me why. Because if I ever put an unpainted miniature on my channel, oh, oh my God, the pitchforks and torches that <laughs> that would ensue. <laughs> oh, before you can even play and learn a game, you have to paint the game. So you can put it on the table and tape it. So mm -hmm. you want to know something? Yeah. Give me that card game. Send it right over right now. <laughs> <laughs> well, speaking of things that make us go home and in the news, you know, being that we have Alex Goldsmith here who works with Gray Fox Games on the show. Oh, I'm wearing my Dukes. I'm, I'm wearing my Dukes. And, and, in trouble. Well, he's got Duke, Dukes, of, Dukes of Dice, our, one of our, our wonderful podcast friends with Sean Ramirez. But in addition to that, you know, Gray Fox Games has got a, a game on Kickstarter right now called City of Gears, designed by Chris. Mm -hmm. Maybe you yeah. could tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, Chris Leader and Daryl Andrews. It's uh, it's a game for two to four players. It's a steampunk themed area control. Uh, you have nine city tiles that are unexplored. Your job is to discover this uh, overgrown steampunk metropolis. Uh, you're deploying little robot workers from your factory, flipping over tiles, making new connections in the city. It's uh, and it's done pretty well for us on Kickstarter so far. It does have a mini. It has a couple minis. A mini? Well, okay. <laughs> Right now, we have uh, Robot Worker Minis for the Founders Edition, which is sort of the more deluxe edition of the game. Okay. You can add on, for, t for $10 extra, you can add on the Juggernaut Mini. Juggernaut uh, the Mini. The Juggernaut Mini, and uh, that one goes around and uh, bashes people and uh, very smashes cool. them into oblivion. We're seeing Immortal 8 on there, which also looks quite nice. That's it does a good look pretty campaign. I like that line, You know, guy. Since, since we're pushing Kickstarter games. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Okay, push yeah, yeah. I hope I didn't cut no, you off. No, please. I really... I've never done a paid Kickstarter review in my life, Ooh. nor will I ever. Oh, but I do like I do like to do them because I like to see people be. I like to see people succeed. I really do. Sure. And from Room Seventeen, I just did a video on a game called Flicky Spaceships. And Flicky Spaceships. It sounds like flip ships. Flicky, from from Renegade. Sounds flicky. like flicky. No, 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 no. It's totally different. You are, you have this. <laughs> outer space area and you flick the ships around and you try to land them on on um, these resource areas now as you get these resources you can buy certain powers for your car okay i mean for your spaceship and then you try to attribute all times and and get different um victory points and so mm -hmm. forth and so on but of course you have your opponent who is also trying to hit you and take the, the resources from you to prevent you from Oh, so it's spaceship. kind of like space curling. Yes. <laughs> Only there's 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 mm. not two asteroids trying to brush their the thing. I mean, that would okay. be pretty cool. A couple little green Martian guys yeah, with the brooms. Just, yeah. 
Yep. You know, and all that. Okay. But it's 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 it was really neat. I think it's great for for kids and stuff like that, and all types of different people. Wow, what's that called again? It's called Flicky Spaceships. Flicky. Can you thingies. can you pull it up, Badger? Flicky Spaceships. Is it on Kickstarter? Yes, it's on Kickstarter right now. Oh. Okay. I think King Clinko and Renegade are probably shaking their fists at these, these folks. <laughs> no, nah, it's it's totally different. Okay, totally uh, different. It's a totally different thing. Well, I think it's kind of exciting uh, with City of Gears launched. You know, that game has taken, you know, several years to come to market. Yeah. I know Arcane Wonders, it was going to be a Dice Tower essential right. game and it had a lot of quality components. They just weren't able to bring it to market quick enough. And see there. See now there. that Gray Fox has picked it up, that's really exciting. Yeah, it's uh, it's done very well for us. And, and Daryl Andrews joined the project a, a, a few years in and, and, and helped add a little bit of that polish. So... Uh, fans of Sagrada, I think we'll we'll maybe maybe see some elements of this. They're they're very different games though. Absolutely, very very different games. So uh, yeah, no, it's uh, it's done quite well for us, and, and we think folks are going to be pretty happy with the final product of that. That's fantastic. Yeah. Now you're seeing those those of you on the audio show. Flicky you're ships. seeing flicky ships and some really cool artwork. You see, how's how's that how's that? Like it's no, it looks very different. It's completely different. The galactic flicker pledge level. Ooh. Let's see. <laughs> That's moving up in the world if you say are that three times fast. I can't. So nice. Oh, well, that's some fantastic stuff. I tell you, we're going to have a little bit of an abbreviated show. I said today we're doing a Rob Orn esque show. And for you Oranites out there, you know what I mean. We're just going from the hip here, having whoa, a good time. Whoa, whoa. Whoa, I, I thought you were about to use that word, unprofessional. No, 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 no. That was not my word. That was your word. Um, it, it's it's very unprofessional. I mean, it's very professional, everybody. So don't worry. We will maintain our standards of premier podcasting, Barry, can even I though Robert's here. Barry, can I ask you a question? Go for it, sir. Um, yes. How do you do it? <laughs> I mean, is there is there some secret to it? Some special drink that you have to take before uh, doing this podcast with him? Because no. I, would, I would probably put my head through a wall if I had to do this every week with him. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just I just think of a nice cuddly teddy bear and and I'm wrapping my arms around it and it's like a big cuddly teddy bear. And every, every time he talks, I imagine it's the teddy bear that's actually talking and not him. <laughs> now I get it. He's the brains of the show. <laughs> He's absolutely the brains of the show. Well, our our thought today, uh, we want to give a special thanks to our sponsors as well before we go into our topic about miniature explosion. But we want to give special thanks to Arcane Wonders, who continues to sponsor our show. They have a great line of Dice Tower Essential games. You'll see that the Merry Men expansion for Sheriff of Nottingham is running right now. In addition to that, we have some fantastic new Dice Tower Essential games that are coming to market, and you're going to hear a lot about those. There's going to be a mech card dra uh, drafting game that's going to be releasing soon, and we're just getting ready to go to the Gamma Trade Show, and you're going to see a lot of information about that. And also would like to give a special thanks and shout out to our Academy Games, and you can go to Kickstarter and get their late pledge right now for Agents of Mayhem, Pride of Babylon. It was very successful on Kickstarter. This is from the IP of the game uh, from Volatron, and you're going to see this in 3D, all of its splendor, and you can see that and still take advantage of the late pledge manager, and it's all the same quality that you'd expect from Academy Games. Uh, we love those guys, so check out academygames.com and arcanewonders.com. And with that said, Academy Games is probably one of my favorite uh, favorite companies of all time. Uh, I mean, oh, by the way, Uwe, uh, where's Storms of Steel? Yeah, Uwe, where are they? Where are they? Uh, where are those painted cubes? Let me just say this. Uh, you know, I've tried to contact him. He has not returned any of my emails or anything. So uh, Doesn't just, send flowers? No, I'm just letting him know at Origins, I'm coming looking for you. Uh oh <laughs> But in, in all seriousness, I have never played a bad game from them at all. Fantastic games. I, I mean, I mean uh, their war games are just ridiculous. Marin Nostrum, one of oh, my Marin Nostrum is like one of my favorite. Love that favorite game. Games. 
I'm not a war game guy. Oh, not a war game. No, guy. you're not. He's not a mint dudes on a map. I'm not a guy. dudes on a map guy. I'm, I'm curious how this discussion topic. I might have to duck out well, for this they, discussion topic. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. The, well, they weren't dudes. They were chits on a map. <laughs> yeah, those are chits on a map. That's oh, right. Okay. Oh well, then it's completely different. Yeah. <laughs> and Vikings right seventeen or eight seventy eight. Oh, that one, yeah, that oh, one's God, fun. Yeah, that was, that fantastic. Seventeen seventy five. The whole Birth of America series. Oh boy. Yeah, classy stuff. I mean, there was nothing they could do wrong. And spoils of war from Arcane. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that was kind Any of. Any game that features your your mug on the box is uh, is going to be a hit. I think yeah. that's that's the Berkey guarantee. <laughs> that's good. You heard it here, right here at the Berkey and Badger board game yeah, battle. If you look closely at this Immortal Eight box, just on the right here, uh, <laughs> it's Berkey. <laughs> <laughs> a younger version. <laughs> Fun <laughs> fact, Berkey is in 40% of all board game covers. You just have to look really, really closely. You'll find him it's, there. It's like a Where's Wally. <laughs> exactly. Where is Waldo? <laughs> so so basically, there's a guy looking to invent fire on that cover? Is there a guy looking to invent fire on that cover? No, there's not. He said Berkey was on there. Yeah, they, yeah. he, he, he was a bit hairy. He was, he was a bit lion looking. Me like fire. <laughs> Isn't that what? Isn't that you know basically what he did when he was younger? Try to find fire for his tribe. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think I, th I think I found your replacement when you retire, Berkey. I'm having Rob on the show. Uh, I, I learned that you can use toenail clipping shavings and rub them really hard together. <laughs> starts a fire. Okay. <laughs> That was that was much information oh, 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 God. somehow. Oh, okay, so moving fun. along, moving <laughs> along, <laughs> we're going to talk about the miniatures explosion. This podcast and is on fire. It's, it's on about fire. to crash and burn. <laughs> <laughs> it not, now it's Stadler and Wardrop, Waldorf. <laughs> <laughs> we uh, we are talking about miniatures and the explosion in the hobby. I mean, it's evident that given Kickstarter's success, uh, a lot of the products that are being offered feature miniatures, and they seem to have a, a great deal of appeal. Um, Robert Oren's channel that you can go to on U YouTube, just Robert Oren, he's been, just has a fantastic community that uh, is really, really a, an engaging community. I don't have the chat up there, Barry, but do you, uh, Badger, do you have the chat up? Do we have some I people in? don't have any chat. I should do that. Sorry. Are there people out there? Yeah, we, <laughs> I'm sure Kabuki Kid is probably in, and and a bunch of the other other folks. So we can check to see if they have any questions for Robert. Is she cheating on him? Kabuki? <laughs> no, it was the other oh, way around. No. She's cheating on me because she will watch our podcast before your podcast. I don't have a podcast. Well, before <laughs> your YouTube video was the thing it is, the monstrosity it is. It was all Berkey and Badger. Oh, she, so she, she oh, really likes so she Badger, like, though. Well, who does it? I'm just in the picture. I mean, you're just. I don't know. This is getting going south just, really yeah, quick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just... This, is, this is the everyone doesn't like Berkey show. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I feel bad for you, Berkey. It's okay. It's okay. First of all, it should be Badger and Berkey. Yeah. Uh, it used I to like be that way, way, but it didn't flow. I mean, alphabetically. I don't know. It works for me. It would be Badger. Badger and Berkey. Everybody loves Badger. It's political. Better if we go Perky Ben Badger. I do the graphics, okay? Oh, I do the okay. graphics. So, okay. I do the music, the editing, the scripts, the audio mix. <laughs> there you go. There's the chat, mate. And they're babbling. There's lots of people. There's Rick, Rick Orton, James, Nathaniel, Misfits. The book is not here. <gasps> dun, dun, dun. <laughs> She'll check it, check it on the flip side. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the show. Badger, I, I can't access it very easily here, so I'll let you respond into the chat. If you have any questions, feel free to just interject them. We've got okay. Robert Orn here, so we're going to talk about miniatures and all that, that that is. But one of the things about Robert that he has been so helpful to the community oh, is he... Oh, hold on. He's cracking up over there. No, I, just the read, I just read a comment uh, on Stone Age, Berkey's on the cover. So. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, photo See, I corner. knew I was right. <laughs> with, with the toenails starting the fire, everything. God. Just toenails. Dude. Just no one settle. <laughs> you know the sad thing? His entire tribe starved. <laughs> not because he, he just, he just sat there the entire time banging two rocks together. <laughs> Don't worry, I'll get it. I'll well, get I think it was just Berkey that had the happy mouth. <laughs> 
thought that was going in a different direction. I thought that was going in the Berkey ate all the food direction. And that's what I meant by happy mouth. <laughs> Berkey ate the whole tribe. What are you talking about? Okay, now it's really cool. What, what, is, what do you think happy mouth is made of? <laughs> it's made of people. <laughs> Uh, it's not so lit red then. I'm crazy in the street, yeah. holding two bags of it. <laughs> okay, what I'm trying to say is Robert does a nice job painting miniatures and helping people paint miniatures. <laughs> <laughs> is that what the show was supposed to be about? That's what it was supposed to be about. But well, I tell you, no, seriously. Um, today, actually, Robert at Miniature Market in St. Louis at their new superstore is actually teaching a whole group of people how to paint miniatures, and that's one of the passions I think uh, Robert has is. Is, is creating an environment where he can help other people enjoy this hobby. Maybe you can kind of address that and how miniatures has brought all that in. Yeah, you know, it, it's just something I always did as a kid. And, and, and nowadays with, you know, to be serious for a second, the way everything is where people, people spend so much time looking at their phone, like I just did right here. No, but, uh, you know, they have their nose in the, and, and they forget that there's an entire world around them. Okay, and, 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 and it becomes something that, you know, you, you don't have any imagination anymore. They really don't. And I think the most important thing that you can ever do, and look, they're taking pictures of each other, <laughs> is, is just be able to express yourself by just picking up a brush, whether it's, it's painting, drawing. It doesn't matter what you do, and, and that's what I try to convey because there's so many people that have so much talent out there and they just don't even know it. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm not a great miniature painter or, or game reviewer or anything like that, but the one thing that we try to do at our channel is just build a solid community of people that count, okay? Too many, I think too many channels just kinda wanna make themselves the star instead of the real people that really drive a channel and that's the community that you build around it. Yeah. And we do it through painting, through uh, community chats, all kinds of stuff. But the thing that really brings them in is, is, is the miniatures. We spend a lot of time showing people how to easily paint their game without over detailing or going crazy and making it too hard for somebody. Yeah. It doesn't matter how you put it on the table. I heard somebody say, well, you know, I see people's miniatures and a lot of times I don't tell them I don't like them. Well, who cares? It's, it's what you put on, when you put paint on something and you feel good about the accomplishment that you were able to do it and you bring it to the table, that's all that matters is how you express it onto that miniature. Maybe your hero's green, maybe he's blue, maybe he's purple, it doesn't matter. It's what, com it's what comes from your heart mm -hmm. and your mind. And that's what's most important. Yeah, I started listening to Robert's channel about four years ago, and my son was just starting to paint uh, his Star Wars uh, Imperial Salt. That was a couple of years ago, I think, with Imperial Salt came out. Mm. And uh, the first thing I said, well, you got to check out Robert's channel. And so he checked that out and he started painting that. And now, you know, as many of our listeners know, Josiah won the Star Wars Armada World Championship a couple of years ago. And um, he has all of his miniatures painted and he is so proud uh, of that product because it's th this community is all about these experiences mm -hmm. that we've been able to have with one another. And then our games are, are kind of a, a sideline to that, but then when we have the game, we have it blinged out, we're doing all the fun things, and it creates this, this fantastic experience. Mm -hmm. And that's what I think your channel does so well because your community is so tight-knit. Uh, one of the things that Robert has done a lot with his painting is really been an ambassador to the hobby and helping so many different people with needs in the hobby. Yeah, and, we, well, you know, whether they needs in the hobby or, or we try to help pet shelters. Um, we recently, our, our dog, uh, Bella, Bella. Um, has gone through um, a really tough time. And uh, we went up to Gainesville and they wanted $8,000 to, to save her. Well, thank God, you know, I have the means to take care of that. But what about the people that don't? Right. And that animal means so much to them. And it's like a family member. Right, right. You know, uh, you know my, my wife, the queen of all reality, yeah. uh, who you got to meet, um, 
she, you know, it, it was very hard for her. Of course we were going to pay it. So we've, we've started things where we try to help people that are, are in, in situations where they can't afford it and an operation will save the pet that we try to help them. We've helped uh, cancer um, institutions. There's a camp up in Virginia. Uh, well, and the little baby that the, the uh, mother couldn't find the formula and, your, and Tammy was able to get Oh, get yeah. formula at a I, discount and you're I, able to take I care of them really for I really don't know what I would do without her. Uh, because if I say, hey, we need to find formula, uh, they, they couldn't afford this particular formula. And it was it was costing them through Medicare like eight nine hundred dollars uh, a month. And, you know, here's a guy, a school teacher and and it's falling behind on his bills. Well, you know, we rallied everybody up and uh, we took care. We would just send them food. And this this free. hobby, this platform with painting miniatures and doing so much that Robert has a Patreon channel where you can go to Robert Oren and you can help support him and you can support at a lot of different levels from a dollar all the way up. But whatever means you feel comfortable with, but, you know, a ten dollar pledge can get you where he'll actually help help. Uh, paint some miniatures for you and he has different levels and mm -hmm. um and not only that you can that a lot of a lot of that money that's going to the patreon that doesn't robert doesn't keep that he uses that to to be the platform to help people <laughs> we bought one thing with the patron <laughs> the, the money basket. the stupid basket that we saw out of I go, you know, we got six dollars left in the patron. <laughs> we buy this dice basket. So we call it the dice basket from patron. But all the money is every month is is divvied up. We try to help as many as we can. We can't help everybody. We do try. And uh every quarter I all the games that I get um donated or, or or whatever to the channel uh we do a silent auction and give that we give all that money away and uh, we, we try to help we try to be good humanitarians first and ambassadors to the hobby yeah and uh, you know i know you you have been a huge help to me as well and um badger just you being here is is a great help because it's getting me through this <laughs> <laughs> Back to the humor, back, back to, to the humor. humor. But in, in all honesty, that we, we try to open up so many doors and just get people to communicate with each other again and, and find each other and, and and work together for a common goal for the betterment of, of, of people. So then for sake of the, the topic, and feel free, Alex, to join in here too. <laughs> Alex, um, just keep sitting know, back there nodding. I've never painted a miniature in my life. Not never. once, never. Well, maybe you need to. I know. Take a I, I feel like yeah, if he's here, like I have to take advantage of the opportunity. I don't know. We may be painting miniatures today, folks. I, you know what? <laughs> I brought football highlights 2052 with oh, me. First mention. Uh, first mention. Not yes. on the Dukes of Dice show. No, I, but I, I, I mentioned, I mentioned on the Dukes of Dice. Anyway. Okay, so not <laughs> exclusively. No, but, but we got we got some testing to do. <laughs> I never heard so many shameless plugs in all my life. <laughs> do you want some more? Shameless. <laughs> Would you like some more shameless plugs? Now, some of the comments that I'm getting from uh, James Brazil and Misfits. Okay, hey, James, to, how you doing, brother? You'll have to excuse my English because I'm terrible at reading English. Okay, they blame Rob Orin for making them paint miniatures. <laughs> <laughs> no, it wasn't. Yeah, they say that. Um, yeah, it was Rob that got them started painting. James is now on his third game, and Misfits is still on their first game. That's probably Conan with all the miniatures there. Did you say Rick is in the chat too? Um, oh, Rick off off fluff off off fluff off fluff. It really off. comes down to a sense of accomplishment. It doesn't matter how it turns out it just is the sense of accomplishment and being able to you know anything's better than a, a piece of gray plastic yeah yeah very <laughs> yeah i know this oh! is one of only a handful of skavens that i've painted in my entire life oh, i have done oh, i am oh, so that. impressed with these these are from advanced hero quest I am so impressed with these. I tried to do some more, and it took so bloody long. I quit. I quit. That's it. I'm. I sold my paints. That was it. See, you should. You should have watched my show. I could show you how to do it in under an hour. Twenty. Yeah, but your show wasn't live in 1994. <laughs> 
<laughs> it was. It was from my basement, and we were doing it with a tape recorder and one of those really huge <laughs> video machines. Remember those things? With a oh, yeah. Yes, I remember. Yeah. I remember. I remember. It was very dark. Yeah. And there was a lot of heavy breathing. Um, and um, ice cream was involved. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of ice cream? Toasted almond. Oh, chocolate chip. So tell me, Robert, what is your favorite? Well, he got right away from that. Because your he favorite about ice cream. <laughs> I want some right now. Okay, <laughs> I resemble food remarks. Yes, you re you resemble a tub of ice cream. Yes. So go on. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> gonna get you some on, um, hello, is this on? <laughs> <laughs> We're going to get custard and save those custard. today. Yeah, Robert, uh, uh, Alex is taking me there. So basically okay. ice cream. So, Robert, it's better, it's better than that. about miniatures, because yes. that's the title of our show, and then we haven't talked about them. <laughs> Which we've completely, we've did, you want it organic. It's, yeah. it's organic, yeah. baby. Gray miniature. Tell us Ooh. what is your favorite miniatures game. My favorite miniatures game is Advanced Hero Quest. Whoa! Ta -da. Ta -da. I love that game. I love that and and war the original Warhammer Quest because it, they kind of evolved into it. I, I just it was one of my favorite games of all time. It was mm. one of the first things I painted. Uh, that and Blood Bowl. Blood Bowl. Mm. Blood Bowl. The old yeah. Blood Bowl. The old Blood Bowl. It used to come with a styrofoam pitch <laughs> back in the day. That was a thousand years ago. So what is your what is your favorite uh, miniatures to paint? Um, skeletons because they go quick. White <laughs> <laughs> wash. Yeah. I actually yeah. really enjoy balloon animals. <laughs> Llama. <laughs> you just uh, for those audio listeners, you just missed this wonderful llama that Robert has created from balloon. <laughs> Maybe we can raffle it off. Just don't use your exacto knife. <laughs> <laughs> that thing on the end that is not flashing <laughs> that is not flashing <laughs> that's why we call this miniatures explosion uh, uh, it all comes around uh, cha -ching. <laughs> of course he takes a couple balloons <laughs> woolly mammoth oh, my wow. first pet <laughs> I don't have enough air for that so do we have any questions from from the chat for Robert? Um, no, but I do have the one. I'm coming across here. It's getting loud in here, so we might need to cut her tight. But okay, I have one question though. Um, do you buy games, Rob, just to paint the miniatures, or do you buy the games to play them as well? I always buy the games to play them. Okay, having the miniatures in them is a bonus. There are plenty of games, and if you see a lot of my segments, I, I have war gaming segments, I have different types of board gaming segments, and of course, miniature segments. If I get a game with miniatures in it, you know, it's got to be something that interests me. I, I'm a big dungeon crawl fan, so a lot of the games have miniatures in them. Uh, mm -hmm. Matter of fact, there's a game that just came out last night uh, that I happened to get a copy of, and I made a video of uh, last night in the hotel room of all things. And it's Dungeon Alliance. And it has miniatures, but it also has chits in it. So, of course, I have to paint all the heroes. You know, you take, paint the chits too? Yes. <laughs> number one, yeah. number two. <laughs> I mean, but what we, what we, it, mostly 99% of the time, it's, it, it's about the game. And I'll try to, you know, um, look up the game and try to find out as much as I can about it. If it has miniatures, well, guess what? They're going right to the paint board. But, you know, I'm not somebody, as much as I love painting and miniatures, I'm not somebody who goes, oh, my God, that has great miniatures. I'm going to go buy it, and then it's a crappy game. What's the point of it? Yeah, no point at all. I agree with you on that. Yeah, I, I, you know. I tell you, for me, having having my favorite game painted is such a fantastic thing and my good friend robert orn painted my favorite game of all time blood rage it only oh. took 28 months but it was fantastic when it was done listen <laughs> listen 
Okay. Do you know how much I paint and how much I, I don't, I, I get out of work and then I go right to the table and I'm painting until I go to sleep. You paint in your sleep. And I paint in my sleep. He has been known to paint with his toes. Wow. How much money did you spend on paint in a given year? Oh, God. Uh, thousands. <laughs> That's a good question. Thousands. So what kind of paints do you like? Uh, Citadel, uh, Army Builder, Vallejo. Those are, are the basic paints that I, I use. I use a, a different series of them. They work very well. You know, and uh, those are the ones I like. And you also have a, a series on your channel where you were, where it's called Painting 101. Painting 101, uh, where we go through and try to show you how to get to the table cheaply. And we show you all the things that you're going to need. And now we are starting Painting 102, which is a little bit more advanced, where we're going to be doing some airbrushing and some other techniques. We try to balance it for everybody. We want to have, uh, I don't call it a master's class because I'm not a master, but it's more of an advanced class to give you the basics. So I, I really I really feel that you can come to my channel and you can kind of get started. And then you can branch out and find whoever else is out there on the internet that does it better and with with the basics that you have taken from my channel. And that's all I try to do. I just try to get you to pick up that brush. Can you find the type of brushes, the type of paints, learning how to do basic washes, right. all of the basic all the, things All the you need. basic, basic things without going and spending $200 for the best brushes, the best paints, you know, the, you know all the other stuff that, that you... So if you've got a beginner painter that is looking to get into into miniatures painting, they want this experience. Mm -hmm. So what would you recommend that they start with? I mean, is there some basic games that, you know, that are have certain miniatures that would, would be good to start with or that they could buy inexpensively to try and work with? I'll tell you the one. Well, in, in inexpensively, there, there's a couple. There's some games that are expensive. And... Um, that I think are really, really good, like Cthulhu Wars. Have you ever played that game? Really good game. Really big miniatures, and that's easy because you, you know, the mistakes that you make. As we know, there are no mistakes. You know, you just you can you can fix everything pretty easily. Um, I wouldn't advise going to a Blood Rage. I would uh, a game like Adrenaline, which is a very good game. Four miniatures. Sure. Boom. You can get it done. You can find out if you like the hobby. And there's only four or five miniatures, I think, sure. in, in the game. And it's just basic things that you can do. Uh, Robotech, uh, not Robotech, um, Battletech. Um, well, I, nowadays it seems like there's, you know, when you're starting to see the hobby with so many of the, the buy-sell places on Facebook, you know, these exchanges where mm -hmm. people are, I mean, you can pick up a game for 10, 15 bucks sometimes, yeah. some of these older titles. Those would be like perfect to yeah. practice on, right? The D&D &D box games are sometimes are good because of the bigger figures. Okay. The game confidence, I always think of the bigger the miniature, the, the easier you learn how to get the feel. Because it's all about feel. It's not, nothing more. Once you have that feel, okay, okay, I, I, I can't, I don't need this much paint on the brush. This is right because I only have this much paint on the brush. So it, it, it's it's just practice, and, and sometimes bigger miniatures help you learn how to apply and move the paint around, move washes around, learning from your mistakes and being able to fix them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You kind of show them some of that palette oh, God, use yeah. and all yeah. of that too, color yeah. mixing and drying your brush and all of those yeah. things. Yeah, you know, just, just basic, basic things because anybody can paint. Anybody? How about if even the, you? The, even me? Yeah. Even <laughs> though you refuse to pick up a brush. I have never painted a miniature. I paint wildlife actually, and I do watercolors. So I actually I do, do oil of, paint. Oil painting. Robert has. He's like. He's he's like. Let, let's paint a happy miniature. Uh, <laughs> like this? <laughs> no, fire it in. That's the way I like yeah. to do it. That fire hey, Rob, it in. Rob, you've got no chance of getting him to paint a miniature. I've been trying to get him to read a rule book, but no, he, he prefers to watch videos. He's terrible. <laughs> well, I think we're getting close to shutting the show down here. Um, I want to give Robert, do you have any final comments or anything you want to say to the audience? I just want to say to everybody, mm -hmm. thanks so much for helping me waste an entire hour of my life that I can never get back. Badger, 
I just want to tell you one thing. You are the talent in this show, and I just wanted to make sure that you knew that. Well, we all know that. What are you talking about? This is not new to anybody. <laughs> I have a question for you, Berkey. Yes. Will Miniature Market be uh, the place that a person can pick up their game toppers when they go to retail? Say that again, please. Okay. Will Miniature Market be one of the places that people can go to to pick up a game topper when it goes to retail? That's a good question. Uh, game toppers, we have 12 of them here. I'm going to just move this mic and let you see the store is filling up. And you're going to see now uh, the whole miniature market superstore. That right there, there's a bunch of people standing at a Mycroft miniatures table. There's going to be 12 tables set up in this superstore where people can come and enjoy uh, all of the different uh, all of the different uh, game toppers line. Um, once we get done with our fulfillment with our Kickstarter, which we're starting just within a week and a half, our first wave of standard game toppers are going out. After we get done with that, we'll be delivering pre-orders, and then we are going to be working with a lot of retailers where there will be an opportunity for you to actually order the toppers from the different stores. We may or may not have them in stock at this particular store. <laughs> It's getting loud in here. We're sorry for the sound, everyone. <laughs> but yes, anyway, to answer your question, uh, game toppers will be available to order. It's just whether or not they will be in stock in the actual locations. More than likely, they will be mailed to the individual customers. And let me just tell you, what you came up with is just absolutely brilliant. Thank you. Those things are absolutely brilliant in all seriousness. Wow, I know you. I give you a hard time, but <laughs> you know I love you. But I mean, when we got ours, we were like, oh, my God, this came out of his head. This is just amazing. I mean, I, I just can't get over the engineering, everything that you put into it. Oh, and you put you. a lot of passion into it. And that's 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 something a lot of people don't do nowadays. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I think gaming, all of what we're talking about is the experience. And whether it's miniatures painting, whether it's it's the, the media that we have here where we can talk about board games, the community that we're in, Game Toppers is an accessory that creates an environment and experience. That's what we're trying to all do. And I have a lot of passion for that. And I know both of you, you're just very dedicated, very passionate about what we're trying to accomplish in the hobby and see this thing grow and, and bring a lot of joy to people's lives. Yeah. yeah. So, Alex, okay. do you have any final words? Uh, no, I'm. I'm Boy, how do you follow that? Up? How do you follow that up? Very, very sweet and kind. And uh, no, I hope Rob can. Uh, I have very bad fine motor control, so we're going to see how this goes. But uh, <laughs> it's going to be a train wreck. If he can teach, you can watch teach, it live. If he can teach me how to paint a miniature, then then anyone can paint a miniature because I am I am real bad. At that. This is going to be an bad. internet sensation. Oh, right. How to teach Alex? And we're going to need to get him a back brace because he's been standing yeah, there is, the entire time. Yeah, this has been an time. awkward position, but it's fine. I'll be all right. <laughs> I was wondering when he was going to pull the chairs out from underneath here. Yeah, I got to stretch it out a little. There we go. Well, Barry, do you have any closing remarks? Uh, yes, going back in Mortal Weight if you like Seven Wonders. And if you don't like Seven Wonders, go back in Mortal Weight because it kicks butt on Seven Wonders. Seven Wonders kicks butt. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't catch all of that. Hey, we just want to, again, just thank Miniature Market for – hosting us at this store. Uh, this is a fantastic store. If you're in the St. Louis area, check out the Miniature Market Superstore. You can come and play on these fantastic game toppers. You can come today and actually get a miniatures class if you're hearing this live. Uh, amazing uh, game stores available here. Uh, they have a ton of product, ton of miniatures. They've got all your painting supplies. And then for our sponsors, Arcane Wonders and Academy Games. You can find Berkey and Badger at www.boardgametheater.com or Board Games Everybody Should. You can also find us on Facebook at Berkey and Badger or on Twitter at Berkey and Badger. You can find Sir Robert Oren on YouTube. Go right to Robert Oren and you can see all these fantastic uh, miniature paintings and that type of thing. There you go. Anywhere else they can find you? Uh, I'm on Instagram, Twitter, 
and I think we're going to even try a Discord thing at some point. I don't know. I got people figure trying to figure stuff out. We're trying to get around, that's for sure. And Alex, how can they get a hold of you? You can get a hold of me at Dukes of Dice, at Alex G underscore human. I also run the Great Fox game social media stuff, so you can hit me up there if you have any Great Fox related questions about Champions of Midgard or Deception or Rising 5 coming soon in April. Oh, oh that's good. Don't forget to find me on BGG. We have a forum, a, a guild. Your guild. Actually, What's guild? your guild number? Robert Orn, that's all I know. Robert Orn <laughs> Guild number unknown. I, I don't. I, I try not. I, I try to stay away from anything electronical. So yeah, me I, too. I don't my, like my the poor friend Leland is always. <laughs> thank God for Leland, Leland, right? Yeah. You can God. check Berkey and Badger at the Board Game Geek Guild two two four eight as well. So with that, I'm we. Two thousand eight. I don't mind too. Oh wow. Yeah. That's We're, a man, am I behind? <laughs> We're going to sign off here. This is uh, Berkey and Badger signing off from the Miniature Market Superstore in St. Louis. Thanks for joining, everyone. Yeah, thank you very much for joining. And Rob, don't forget to leave him at the bus stop. He's got a long walk back to Babylon, that's for sure. <laughs> I will at that, my good friend. Okay, take care and see you later. Everybody dance! We're so glad we had this time together. And now it's time to go. It won't be long till we have. I said dance. You're not dancing. Show them people you're dancing. I'm not gonna show. So keep us in mind. Get online. Berkey and Badger will be back. <laughs> no time. I didn't know I had to dance on this, man. To dance off. Anyone.